Hey, thanks for watching today. We've got a lot to pack in this video. We're going to cover all the usual markets and maybe some markets you haven't really seen before. Uh, we're also going to cover the market totals and some changes to parcel fare that were made recently and big, massive over-the-counter news to cover. So uh, on that note, let's just uh, go ahead and get started with the market totals. So since our last news video a couple weeks ago, we're right here in the middle of November, but we've added 26,409 properties. Uh, 11,000 and change liens, 12,000 deeds, some foreclosures there, and a land bank. But what I want to call out here is, for the first time I can remember making these videos, we added more tax deeds than tax liens over this period. So uh, that was intentional. If you uh, understand tax lien and tax deed markets, you, you know that significantly more liens are issued uh, for taxes than deeds. Because in general, um, liens sort of graduate into deeds and only the surviving liens make it to deeds. So by nature, there's a lot fewer deeds in the market, but we managed to find quite a few uh, to add the last couple weeks. Uh, our foreclosure numbers are up too, 2,518, a lot of opportunities for investment there. Uh, so that's really uh, something to call out that I think is exciting for uh, our, our customers. Uh, so we're going to talk about the market totals broken down by state. So first of all, let's break down those foreclosures I mentioned. <clears throat> the majority are in Pennsylvania, 1,483. Florida has its usual 600-ish, Colorado 200-ish. And uh, moving down the list, you kind of see uh, we're tracking more, or, well, well, seven markets now, foreclosures. Those are just going to be standard foreclosures, not necessarily tax foreclosures. The over-the-counter properties, this is the big news. Uh, Pennsylvania, 5,200 over-the-counter tax deeds added, Florida 5,000, Maryland 653, and on down to Mississippi, those are deeds for 379 OTC deeds, 235 liens in Colorado, and moving down the list, <clears throat> Alabama about 100, and then it kind of trails off after Alabama. And lastly, the auction properties. We are very active tracking auctions here. New Jersey took the cake in the last couple weeks with uh, 3,700 properties roughly added. South Carolina, we're still adding, uh, 2,000 more added. Uh, Pennsylvania, uh, 2,000 added. Some of those are sheriff sales or judicial sales, kind of a mixture there. Uh, Florida, 1,100. Those are going to be tax deed uh, auctions that were added or properties that were added. Texas, almost almost 1,000 added this month for tax deed auction. Georgia, one of our, actually our newest state, 651 properties. Uh, Tennessee, those are going to be uh, some upcoming tax auctions, 615 of those. Ohio is one of our regular monthly states that uh, just has a lot of auctions, 365 there. And then we get into some of the smaller numbers, Washington 160, North Carolina 129, uh, Virginia 114, California 108, which are actually reissued, we'll cover that in a minute. And then uh, kind of the, the trailing there at the end to total up to 12,246. Uh, so, since we just talked about auctions, let's talk about our auction calendar update. We officially surpassed 10,000 auctions tracked in this year. We, we made it with time to spare, 10,137. So uh, at the rate we're going now, next year should be even bigger. Uh, we do add and change auctions daily. So uh, it, it's a moving target. Anytime you look at our site, these numbers are gonna differ. They're probably gonna be different by the time this video is published. And right now there are 1,512 of those auctions that are upcoming. So that's <clears throat> headed into 2025. That's actually, um, some of those are not in 2024 because we're tracking into 2025 now. So this is our trusty auction calendar that has doubled in size in 2024 and we still have managed to get everything on here. Uh, it's, it's seen us through the year and here we are moving our focus to the last two months. We are halfway through November and kind of forward looking into December. So if you go down the screen with me here, we are coming out of Indiana's lean auctions uh, in the fall. There's only one of those left. Uh, we do have foreclosures year-round there. And then moving down the list, you see Florida has deed and foreclosures year-round. So the next seasonal ones to look at are South Carolina and Colorado. Uh, those are lean auctions. I should have updated this. South Carolina is spilling into December this year, so it's running a little uh, longer than most South Carolina auction seasons. And then everything below Colorado there uh, is uh, year-round auctions uh, from New Jersey liens to everything that you see there. So a lot of these states are uh, year-round focused. Um, before we jump into our first state, I have a couple things to show you. We did make some changes to the site and I want to cover those. So let's just jump to the homepage here. 
Uh, first off, uh, we've added this jump off button here for list searching. If you're not a map search person, which is, especially now that some of these auctions are very small that we're tracking, uh, we, we've added this list search, which will just jumpstart you directly onto a list search like this. And you can say, okay, well, I'm gonna look at Highlands. Let's look at Leans. Uh, let's go over the counter only. And boom, we're gonna actually see uh, those 5,000 rows here on the list in full screen. So another thing to notice here is we've always had list searching. You would basically go from the map and click over to a list like this. But uh, we, based on user feedback, this, the screen real estate was getting crunched on the right side, so we actually made this full screen to take up the entire space and really uh, give you more information um, without having it crushed. And so the lines are, are cleaner now. And this screen, if you used it before, hopefully uh, you like the changes. So that's uh, one big change. On the inventory history report, we, and actually while I'm at it, we restructured these menus to put the tools together and grouped. Uh, we have four tools for finding parcels. It's the map search, the list search, auction calendar, and the OTC report. And then if you're tracking your research, you can look at your favorites list and the other saved lists that you have. And if you're Alabama or Mississippi, you have price quotes that you're tracking in those three options. Uh, and we broke off some of the options off into this connect and learn menu. Parcel Fair 101 is where you uh, would start your training on the site if you want to learn about it. I mean, I'll just click on it. You can see videos here starting with the 101 video that just shows you what Parcel Fair is. Uh, we have a YouTube community that we link to here. That's where you can interact with us in the community and see all the upcoming videos, subscribe. The Facebook group is private for paid subscribers, but you see that third option here. A lot of people don't realize this comes with their subscription if they don't read the welcome email that we put out there. So we added it to this menu here. Uh, if you are a subscriber, just um, request to join this group and we will review it and add you uh, if, you're a, if you're a subscriber. Uh, the reason you want to subscribe to that group is because uh, the members there are fantastic. Our, our customers and users on the site are so generous with answering questions that uh, a lot of times the Parcel Fair staff can't get to the question before one of you guys answers it. And frankly, with your uh, diverse experience in many markets, uh, the answers are very high quality. And, and um, so this group has become a, a wealth of information and uh, for referrals or questions, if you're looking for somebody in a market or in this area to take some pictures. And lastly, people who wanna sell a tax lien or a tax deed that they're holding, sometimes they just post it on the Facebook group and uh, get some interest that way. So there's a lot of great interactions on that. If you're not a Facebook person, I would challenge that and say, the benefits outweigh any downside that you don't like about Facebook just to uh, join this group alone. And lastly, we've added this account support menu option here. It's self-explanatory. Uh, if you want to contact us, that, that's a helpful way to do it. So that's the new menu system. And uh, the over-the-counter inventory report, again, this fourth tool on the list, you may not have used it before, but it's very useful uh, to see what's been added to an over-the-counter inventory recently. You notice it defaults to the latest month of, uh, so November in this case in Arizona, you see 29 uh, over-the-counter properties added. Most of those were deeds by uh, the status column here. These columns are clickable, you can sort. And uh, we also put this entire uh, report into full screen mode as well so that you would have more room to look at the data more comfortably, a little elbow room there. Of course, you can switch states. We're gonna be talking about Arkansas over-the-counters in this, um, video. You can see the 14 that were added in November. Uh, Mississippi and Alabama are great states to check out here. We really just put the states in here that we track over-the-counter inventories over time and where it's timely for you to know that 379 parcels or tax deeds were added to Mississippi's inventory so you can jump out there and apply for those quickly. And if you want to sort by total value and see, hey, there's the most expensive one right up top. Now we know that property uh, recently added that chunk of land is uh, going to be um, now available and you click on the purchase option and go straight to the application in Mississippi to try to buy it. So uh, that's the changes that I wanted to call out. Actually one more change, I'll click on the next one. Um, we found ourselves asking people a lot of times to um, pay attention to the legal description. So. We noticed it, it didn't really have a label on it and was kind of hiding out down here. So we draw some, drew some attention to it, added a description label. And a lot of times if you're looking in maybe Florida or places where there's subunits of apartments, this can be key. 
to know what you're buying. If you're buying the address, but uh, you know, frankly, it might be one unit. It might be a laundry room, <laughs> you know, inside an apartment building. And that legal description is a great way to know what's being bid on uh, or being purchased if you're uh, buying over the counter. So that's uh, the explanation of things that we've added. And by the way, a quick thank you to the people who helped us uh, with those ideas. If you, your feedback was key in uh, some of these changes and we have a lot more planned this winter to change on the site too, uh, so more to come. Let's kick off the states with Pennsylvania tax deeds. Now this was going to be its own video this week, uh, but I'm just going to plagiarize my own material from that video and condense it here just for a brief summary. There will be a Pennsylvania video coming soon. We just want to make sure we get it as accurate and comprehensive as possible and that, frankly it's just going to need some more work first. So. Uh, first off, let's talk about the four types of auctions that are, I'm sorry, we call them sales because they're not all auctions. The first one is the tax deed upset sale. It's seasonal. It's for the most part complete. There is at least one county doing a reoffer, sort of some leftovers. Uh, but that is your first chance at buying a tax deed once it's become delinquent. Important to know that those tax deeds in the first upset sales every year, uh, they are not free and clear. In fact, they uh, transition and transfer any uh, debts, mortgages, or liens that are on the property to you as the buyer. So that could mean one of two things. It could mean maybe you don't want to shop in those sales. Or if you're going to shop in those sales where all the best deals will have your first chance of buying them, make sure you do your research. Do your title reports. Uh, make sure that if you're bidding on a property, you're not inheriting something you don't want, like a mortgage or some debts or liens on the property. The next level are private sales. They are direct from the county. They're leftovers from the upset sales. And that exact same disclaimer I just gave applies to private sales. If you buy these, they have not cleared title. They've not done any of the um, essentially uh, foreclosure steps on the property yet. Which takes us to the next uh, set are judicial sales and sheriff sales. Now I'm kind of doing a hand wave glossing over here. The other video will go into detail. But judicial sales are essentially the next level of upset sale, I'm sorry, of uh, leftover properties. Sheriff sales are more of an umbrella that can handle um, some of these tax deed sales and some of them are mortgage foreclosure type of sales. Uh, we are tracking a bunch of these. Uh, we have 80 plus of those upcoming right now and we're adding more. They do happen year round. And then lastly, repository sales and over-the-counter deeds. Repository sales are the last line of, of kind of clearing house for these leftover deeds. They sometimes have them in annual or uh, auctions that are scheduled throughout maybe the spring, and sometimes they sell them over the counter. So the big news today is that we now have our first chunk of properties available over the counter and repository sales in Pennsylvania. We're gonna take a look at that in just a second here, but. This is the reason why there were so many deeds added in the last two weeks because uh, these inventories, some of them had over a thousand properties per county. So uh, before we move to the demo, just send us county requests if these markets interest you. If you say, hey, you know what? I like the repository uh, list on this county and you haven't gotten to it yet, just tell us. Uh, we'll go track it down and if it's, um, if it's available, of course, we'll pull it onto the site. And uh, if it's not, we'll, uh, we'll chat with you and see if maybe we're missing something. So let's go talk about the, uh, let's go to the auction calendar first for Pennsylvania. And uh, so a lot of these auctions have completed, but you see a, a lot upcoming. These are a mixture of sheriff sales. This Cumberland upset sale is a continuation of their upset sale that happened earlier this fall. So that's the one where they're just kind of, I guess, going in for seconds here. Only 18 properties in that though, so nothing uh, huge. Uh, moving down the list, uh, you can see we're just sort of peppered on the calendar with sheriff sales and tax sales. And um, sometimes we're able to distinguish that it's a mortgage sale, like this one that says mortgage on it. So we'll try to call that out whenever we can. Uh, but yeah, a lot of auctions coming up into January and on into February, uh, even into March and April. So the calendar extends way out in Pennsylvania but you probably want to know about those over-the-counter properties I mentioned. So let's just go over to the map search and I'm gonna click on Pennsylvania. And I'll show you the first one that comes to mind, Beaver County, let's clear our filters out. 2,211 properties that we know of in this county, but I'm gonna use this inventory filter on the left and say, just show me over-the-counter. 
Okay, well, there's still 2,182, so we only lost a few properties there. All right, so if you've worked in other OTC states, this looks like Alabama, Mississippi, something like that. This may look familiar to you. You see quite a bit of blue. I'll uh, throw some contrast here. Uh, you can almost buy entire streets, entire neighborhoods in this repository list. <clears throat> uh, in fact, in this case, you can buy all those contiguous ones right there. Uh, back to satellite, let's take a look at this. Uh, some of these have structures, some of them, probably the most of them don't. In fact, uh, let's go filter uh, to improvements. This is in the uh, improvements drop down. If I click vacant land, it's going to show me 1,870 of these are vacant land. And let's go for improvements only. There's 312. So 312 over the counter properties. Uh, if you zoom in on them, you're going to see rooftops uh, for the most part. Every once in a while, you might hit one where um, the improvement is just something so small. Let's see this one maybe. Yeah, the value is $10,000. The improvement was 1600. I think it's the frame of that house that's left over. So, uh, okay, so let's let's filter. Let's say uh, out of those improvements, I just wanna see minimum value of 20,000 bucks. This should really take out some of the, uh, it actually cut the number in half. It took out a lot of the properties that may have had improvements that were so small that I, I didn't think they were worth pursuing. But as you can see now, I'm really looking at some properties that uh, command my attention. Let's, let's click on this one. Uh, I see a street view on this. Let's panorama that. And uh, we're talking about this property right here with the roof kind of uh, hanging. This is not a bad looking tax property uh, from my experience. Uh, this, of course, Google photo is not, um, is, it was taken in June, so we're a few months behind. But if you were going to, I mean, you could pick worse properties to, um, <laughs> to go scout. So uh, looking down the list, we can tell that it's vacant according to the US Postal Service. Nobody's there. It is in an opportunity zone. Uh, we won't cover opportunity zones too far in this video, but uh, it is the uh, HUD department, Housing Urban Development, federal government. It's, it's great if you are uh, trying to find marketability for a property where an investor would be transferring money or funds from a non-real estate asset into a real estate asset. So again, I'm not gonna go too much deeper on that. <clears throat> Let's get to, uh, on the right side, the research links. We can take you straight to the GIS map or the property card search if you wanted to go to the property records for this county and actually dig in on the property. But uh, maybe the biggest time saver is this big fat green button under the purchase options. The purchase steps that take you straight to the county where you would uh, buy this property. And here are the steps, okay. So, of the different counties in Pennsylvania, they all handle this a little bit differently. Some of them, like this one, want to have a bid uh, sent to them. I'm trying to read this speed reader really quick. Some of these required you to put them in person. I don't see an in-person here, uh, but they do want cash, cash only. And they, uh, let's see, anything else of note here? Um, you're gonna need to read these closely depending on the county you're buying in. And I, I think that's important that we can't condense all the detail. We really need you to understand what you're buying, how you're buying it, what you're on the hook for cost-wise. So. This is as far as we can take you in the purchase process. You have to deal with the county at some point and this is where that handoff takes place. So, we will take you as far as we can. Let's try another county. Um, let me I'm gonna clear my filters first. And uh, I think um, Erie County was, yeah, 215 in Erie County. Let's check those out. Uh, I think, if I remember right, these were all land only. So that's, um, let's go verify that if I do if I do uh, improvements oh there's one with improvements <laughs> okay so let's do uh, we're just gonna look at land then let's give it a minimum one acre and see if anything is there two properties have more than an acre so <laughs> uh, I can tell you right now from the shape you do not want this ditch unless you have some kind of strategy for a ditch that I don't understand <laughs> so let's click on the other one here all right we've struck out on the one acre properties. That's just a wedge of property. Unless you're gonna put a billboard on I-79 and get the permits for that, I don't know what you would do with this property. So uh, let's move on to another county. Uh, I know we put some in, uh, Washington County is a good one to talk about. Uh, so let's go check those out, 630. And we'll move on after this. Uh, Pennsylvania's had enough attention today. So uh, out of these 630 parcels, let's move on down. And uh, I'm gonna just use my side scroll bar here. This one, oh, I'm sorry. Some of these are at auction. So let me go take my over-the-counter. 
up. Oh, I know why. Let's let's fix that. All inventories. Um, Washington County is special. So they actually, uh, you see the foreclosure sales here, but at the bottom you see this repository sale, TBD. That means they are planning a repository auction for their leftovers, but it's to be determined when the date is. That's where those properties are hiding out. In the meantime, you can research these properties that will be going to the sale. We have all the information you need to do that. Uh, in fact, let's see if there's any buildings, uh, 37 buildings. We'll narrow it down a little bit. And uh, let's go on to, uh, let's just click a few of these, see, that's uh, interesting. All right, so this is, looks like one with a um, house maybe falling apart, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, definitely falling apart. <clears throat> so this is a vacant property coming up in the uh, pending auction. You see in the purchase option, we can't give you the steps to buy because it's not announced yet. We will keep that information um, uh, coming. There is a tax sale information link here that will take you to the website and it shows you the date is to be announced. That's why we don't know it. But as the spring auction is approaching, uh, we will of course track the property list for you and uh, narrow it down to what actually goes to the sale. In the meantime, you're, you're free to look at it here. So I'm gonna stop with Pennsylvania because again, we're putting a, together a more comprehensive video to help you out. That was a lot to cover in this news format, so I'm gonna move on. Uh, but I think Pennsylvania is one of those exciting markets that shows a ton of promise. Uh, with any market, use caution and make sure you understand what you're buying. But uh, the supply of properties is definitely there. So moving on to Washington, another uh, new state that is showing a lot of promise, a lot of potential. We've tracked our first 30 auctions there and we have <laughs> all of these coming up. So uh, I'm not gonna read these to you, but you can see uh, there's quite a few just on the normal calendar. And if you watched our last video, I, I did a separate call out like I am in this one of King County because they have so many sheriff sales on a regular basis. I'm just gonna pull them off to the side and show you those separately. So let's uh, skip over to parcel fair and uh, we will look at the Washington auction calendar briefly uh, you see a few have completed in November but we have a lot left and uh, let's see I'm trying to think if there's one that um, stuck out as uh, most interesting uh, we're, let's go with this one uh, let's do Grace Harbor I, I just like the name <clears throat> so uh, we're looking at 61 properties here uh, we'll just click on this one, find it on the map. You can see uh, there's a property there. Looks like it is um, torn down from the satellite. So I'm gonna, I saw a little cluster over here that we can look at. Uh, let's take a look at this one instead. So uh, we have a occupied property address. The value is 22,000. Uh, it looks like it's maybe a small building in the back according to the satellite image here. Uh, <clears throat> it has an upcoming auction. It's an opportunity zone as well. And let's click on the purchase option here. Uh, this is a bid for assets auction. This has been a great company for us to uh, uh, work with so far. I think um, what I love about them is their, their bidding process right here, this bid on the parcel button. We can take you straight to the property to bid on. Oh, this one got withdrawn. Okay, so I'm glad that they, uh, again, easy to use, easy to see. Uh, their auction lists right here. Let's go down to the um, auction folders and you can see they have different uh, properties here that are, again, just a, kind of an easy site to use. We'll click on a different one. You can make your deposit, ask questions. A uh, lot of information here, parcel images. And let's see if I can find the one thing I did want to show you here. Um, not seeing it. Okay. Uh, typically, a lot of times there's a title report link, but I don't see one on this one, unfortunately. Uh, one thing in Washington is a lot of these properties do have a uh, title report included that was performed by the county. So I don't see it on this property. Maybe it's uh, forthcoming in the upcoming in the future, I mean. But uh, that's Washington. That's an example of one property there. And uh, back to the auction calendar. Uh, there's just a lot of auctions sort of scattered around. So uh, if you know these counties and want to bid and participate in those, then by all means, um, we're here to help you get started on it. Moving on to Georgia, we just debuted this a couple weeks ago, but we have tax deed sales all year and we barely have dipped a toe into the market here. We got our first four auctions, um, uh, I'm sorry, our, our first month of auctions was November and then now we have four December auctions that have just been loaded. 
uh, Chatham, Gwinnett, DeKalb, and Fulton. Chatham and Savannah, Gwinnett, DeKalb, and Fulton are Metro Atlanta and actually Atlanta itself. Uh, so pretty big markets there. We will be adding more. Those, those four happen all on December 3rd. They are all in person as are most of the Georgia auctions are in person. Uh, we will make a video covering how the process works. It's very investor friendly, uh, except for the fact that there's high competition in certain markets. So uh, send us your request for other county auctions, but I will caveat that there's like 150 counties in Georgia. Uh, don't just send me a list of 150 counties because we already know the counties. We're already looking at them very frequently to look for auctions. If you happen to know that a county has an auction scheduled, let us know because uh, we will go out of our way to go pull that auction for you. Um, but don't just send us you know, 50 counties and say, you know, go look for it because we're already doing that. We're already looking through as many counties as we can. So uh, if you know one is scheduled, just let us know. South Carolina, we're looking at the auction season is actually in mid swing. There are still some late ones coming in to December coming up. Uh, we've been going since October. Uh, the first 12 auctions are available to research and we know that more are coming out for the December time period, any day now, we're actually, we've been in touch with the counties and asking them when to expect it. Um, a couple of them are actually late right now and then some of them are happening this week. So uh, we will get those auctions on the site as soon as they're released. Uh, don't forget we have foreclosures in Parcel Fair for South Carolina. The auction calendar looks kind of like this. Uh, you see a lot on here because I'm looking at foreclosures and tax liens together. Let's go ahead and save ourselves some time and go to tax auctions only. So we had five tax auctions in October, another six in November, one in December coming up, a very large one, uh, actually one here in November as well left over. And I, like I mentioned, markets like Greenville and I believe Spartanburg have not announced their list yet. So as soon as those are available, we will put those on the website as well. Um, but let's, uh, let's, I don't know, let's just jump into this county right here and see what it looks like on a map. Um, I'm gonna add my county borders, and I'm going to, uh, let's go with uh, high contrast by clicking that. So this county, uh, Coastal, uh, Myrtle, is actually the county that Myrtle Beach is in. You may have heard of Myrtle Beach. Uh, those 2,000 parcels are scattered, and yes, there are beachfront parcels. We'll take the satellite off so we can, uh, on so we can go see what that looks like. Uh, yeah, this is uh, an example of a beachfront property here. You notice in the legal description, unit 208. That is important to know because you're not buying the building. You're buying the unit. In fact, you're buying a lien on the unit. You're not even buying the unit. <clears throat> if you do want to participate in this auction, the green button right here is the purchase options. Follow the instructions. I think every auction in South Carolina is in person unless I'm forgetting. But this one is uh, December 3rd, 9 a.m. at this uh, judicial building. And the taxes on this unit are $28.51. If you want more information on the auction, the yellow button helps you out. The green button takes you to the list. But let's go, um, let's go to the auction page, that yellow button. Registration forms and other things that will help you out. Um, I always recommend reading about the auction if you're going to participate. So uh, that's a quick deep dive on one property just to kind of get cut to the chase there. Uh, let's see. There were, of course, other ones. And I just closed my window and <laughs> we're back in Washington now. That's my fault. Okay, so um, too many browser tabs. Anyways, those auctions are, are pretty big and we'll have some more coming up in December as soon as they are announced. Uh, South Carolina is a good transition to go straight into Colorado because they're having their big fall tax lien auction season. They are further along though. Uh, we did, um, let's see, tracked 40 auctions and only four of them remain for tax liens. Uh, they do have OTC liens. I think we had 200 added this month. And um, there will be a lot more added after the auction's complete. I think we're just, we just kind of keep a pulse on those until they release. For closure auctions, we have 12 in November scheduled, nine already scheduled in December, and we're already into January of 2025 with 11 more coming. Uh, but we do have an off-season investing video if you want to understand how those OTCs and foreclosures work. And we have several videos about the auction season if you want to see that in Colorado. Let's uh, not take too much time on Colorado, but I will show you. On the auction calendar, we can do the tax auctions only. Uh, actually, we already, we already did. So we're filtered now to see um, uh, just those that are remaining in November, those uh, four at the bottom here. 
Uh, these are decent size. They all have a few hundred, pretty much. And if you wanted to see the foreclosures, you can either do all auctions or just foreclosures only, and then scroll through and see these uh, nice foreclosure auctions that are available for you to shop in. Okay, so moving on to Indiana. The fall sales are coming to a close for real this time. I said it two weeks ago, but now we really have one auction remaining out of the 92 that happened. So a big season coming to a close here. Uh, there's, uh, we do have a video about the treasure sales if you just kind of want to see what went down, but um, it's a little late now. <laughs> so, so let's talk about foreclosure auctions. It's a great way to buy in the off season. Uh, I will say the off seasons in Indiana are short because their seasons are wide. <laughs> like when they do the spring auctions, it's I think the spring auctions can start as early as January, February and go into June. So it's basically like the spring auctions are the first half of the year and the fall auctions are the second half of the year. So you don't have to wait long to get into the spring sales. Uh, but in the meantime, the foreclosure sales, 51 of those scheduled in November, kind of quiet in December with 18, and then January of 25, we already have 24 auctions scheduled there. So let's move on and uh, let's talk about New Jersey with the year-round tax lien auction sale, uh, season. Uh, 79 auctions in November, I'm sorry, in October, then we dipped in November and then December's on the uh, increase again. I love showing uh, year over year how this looks because uh, this is how we were tracking back in October, comparing that the left side is 23 and the right side is 2024. Uh, and then you can see now, boom, we just had a ton of auctions added. And the symmetry between years is just almost staggering. It's almost identical uh, to how last year looked. So uh, I kind of like that with um, when you know that a certain month is going to have a heavy number of auctions. Um, so in October, we hit about 80, 79. In November, almost 30, and then December, I think we're going to probably be in the 70s again like last year. Uh, so the New Jersey auction calendar looks like this. Uh, a lot to look at. You'll notice one thing since these are annual tax sales, uh, these are decent size, uh, usually hundreds of properties in these, but don't forget that these are tracked at the municipal township level and instead of the county level. So by nature, they're smaller um, geographies that are being tracked, which is, you know, that means you're not gonna have a lot of auctions with over like a thousand properties. Some can be down to the 20s or teens, uh, but you will have some where um, hundreds of properties are available. And uh, like here, Newark is gonna have 897 coming up on December 6th. So that's, um, and we'll just pop that auction open. Let's, uh, as a reminder on the calendar, you can either open these properties as a list, you can see everything in the county or just the auction. Let's map everything in this auction. 897 parcels right here. Newark, uh, uh, big busy area. It is um, near the border of New York there, not quite on it. And uh, let's just dive in. We'll take a look at this property, just out of total random. $55,000 is actually, uh, it's the, so land only, this is good that I'm looking at it because it's actually the lot behind this blue van and not this pretty building. Always compare the satellite image down here. Let me zoom in on that. Uh, the satellite image shows clearly that it's grass where the yellow outline is and the street view Google did their best and they gave us this uh, kind of view of both the properties but we need to uh, also notice that it is a uh, land only with no improvements and um, if you wanted to buy this piece of land or lean on it you would click on the purchase option and follow these instructions and these links to register or view the list so everything you need to find the auction register and participate right there Moving on to Texas, one of our favorite states this year. We've just been adding and adding and adding. Our first month in June, we tracked four auctions and steadily every month we've added auctions. 67 tracked in November that have already passed. 74 tracks so far for December. So yet again, another month of growth. Uh, there are still like 260 counties in Texas. So um, we uh, are up to 125 that we've tracked. Not every county has a property every month. So. Just because we're tracking 125 counties doesn't mean there's 125 auctions every month. In fact, there are 74 in December that we're tracking. So uh, more auctions on the way every month. Check back. It's an exciting uh, market for investors. Let's go up here. Texas is a, a unique market because there are a mixture of uh, in-person auctions and online. So let's, uh, let's check out December's 74 auctions and say in-person only 50 of them. Two thirds of them. Let me let me uh, click.
close November out. 50 of the auctions are in person and you can see them all in one view, just like that. They all happen on the same day. You can't go to all 50 of these auctions because they're in 50 different places. Uh, there are some surrogate bidding, I think they call them proxy bid type of options there where you can send somebody or you could have a team of people and just kind of cover auctions that way. A lot of you are individual investors and you are just gonna have to pick an auction. There are online uh, 20, oh actually, I'm sorry, 15 of those are online. So that's uh, not what I expected there. Um, so 15 online and uh, everything else is gonna be in person. So back to here, uh, 74 auctions coming up and um, we'll keep adding. If we see any more added, I think one was added today for a pretty major county. I've already forgotten which one, but these uh, auctions, they just kind of show up and we put them on the side as soon as they show up. Uh, we do have a video about Texas auctions. Uh, there are some amazing benefits to investing in Texas, but I'm not gonna cover all this here because we already covered it in that video on this channel, and so go check it out. Ohio, just a very steady flow of auctions throughout the year. It's a sheriff sales that we're covering, and those are a mixture of tax deeds and foreclosures uh, into one type of auction they call a sheriff sale. Uh, we're currently tracking 125 of those auctions in November and 75 scheduled so far in December. Uh, we do have an intro video to help you learn Ohio, but in the meantime, while we're here, let's take a look at the calendar. November, a lot of them have passed and a lot of them are coming. Uh, some of these can be very small, a lot of one property auctions. Some of them have 45, 50. Um, don't see anything bigger than that right here on the calendar right now. Uh, in December, um, we already have quite a few auctions popping up. And uh, so yeah, that's really pick the area you're interested in. And um, if you want to look at uh, across all the auctions, the best way to do that is something like this. Uh, our mapping uh, link here or the list will let you see everything in the county or just what's in the auction. So let's do everything in the county this time. And so if we're looking at all the auctions coming up, there's 115 parcels. So now I can just shop and look through these properties. And you know, the only thing I care about is that these auctions are in the future. And so when I click this property, I, you know, now maybe I want to buy this property. I'm gonna click on the purchase option and see that the sale is scheduled on December 2nd. And here's the registration link and the auction info and the list. So different ways to connect with that auction. But uh, you don't have to you know, pick a, a single date here. If you see a county that pops up more than once, uh, you can just go straight to the map and see everything available and then narrow it down after you look at the properties. It's really up to you if, if the date's more important to you or just the you know, characteristics of the property are more important. Uh, moving on to New Mexico, not a ton going on. In fact, uh, one of the last two auctions that we have tracked is happening today. So. Uh, San Miguel will be the last one on this list. If they don't release any more this year, this could be the close of the year for New Mexico. Uh, we do have a, a video that talks about tax deed investing there. I recommend watching it and uh, understand that market better before you buy. California, one of our newer states. Uh, the first auctions are in the books. That's the good news. The bad news is we've gotten down to a trickle of only one auction that we have on the calendar left for the year. It's actually a follow-up auction for Los Angeles. They had one October 19th, and it looks like about 108 properties must have been left over uh, because they are being uh, re-advertised in this December 7th auction. It's online on GovEase, so you can check it out. <clears throat> and uh, we think there's more auctions coming this fall into the winter. I, I don't know for sure. We had a couple postponed and some others that we're tracking, and they don't have dates yet. So uh, we're going to be wishful thinking that there's more coming this fall. But uh, similar to New Mexico, this could be the last auction of the year if we don't find any more. Michigan, uh, so far in 2024, it's been a big year, our first year tracking Michigan, but we tracked 107 tax deed auctions that are annual, uh, seasonal based. So those are in the books. And then the reoffer sales are complete, we're 35 reoffered. And then the no reserve sales completed where they dropped the reserve price and 52 of those auctions all happened two weeks ago on November 1st. So what is left after that, right? Um, Surplus properties and land banks are coming soon. That's where we're headed next now that we're through the auction season. Uh, so the, uh, these are two different things. Surplus properties are um, held by uh, kind of more like a tax property uh, holdings and land banks are gonna be more like uh, 
uh, land banks. <laughs> so there's probably unique agreements per county. There's even one uh, state level land bank that's going to have its own type of agreements. Uh, I think in like Detroit, is it uh, the Detroit Land Bank or might be um, might be called the Wayne County Land Bank? I, I'm just getting into this. Uh, you can get a property there free and clear, but you have a year to bring it up to code if I remember the program correctly. So there are strings attached sometimes with land banks. So important to know what you're buying. We'll help you with that as we are covering those programs in the future. And uh, if you want to see those auctions that have already completed, we do have a in video tax investing video on that, but um, it's up to you. It's not really timely right now since the auctions are in the book. Tennessee, uh, we do have a small offering of auctions coming up. Uh, in particular, Hardeman is happening today, so we'll skip over that. Davidson canceled their auction. It would have been next week. Uh, Benton has a nice sized auction coming, but no date yet. Uh, I think we assigned it a date to, just to get it on the auction calendar, but it will be changing that as soon as we get a, a real date. This, this is not the first time this has happened in Tennessee, not even the first time this year. Uh, December 18th, we have a Davidson County auction, maybe, because they tend to advertise these and then pull them. We'll see if the advertisement survives or if we just get another cancellation. And we're uh, coming up on a big auction in January for Shelby County where uh, that started off with close to 2,000 parcels and we've tracked it all the way down to about 1,200 that are remaining. So uh, Shelby County is of course the Memphis area if you wanna buy there. On that note, there is a over-the-counter opportunity in Shelby for their land bank, which we have another couple thousand properties there. So I, I will uh, today cover, we're just gonna dump everything, all everything on the screen for Shelby County. I'm gonna clear my filters and just throw every property on here so you can see that opportunity. Um, this is gonna be three inventories that we're looking at. There is a January auction, an April auction, and then the land bank over the counter. And as you can see, uh, it plays out nicely on the map. We have yellow properties are auction, blue properties over the counter. It's that simple. If you need to buy soon and don't want to compete at auction, buy the blue properties. If you want to bid at auction, maybe try for a better deal and better quality properties because they're not so old, go for the yellow properties. Uh, I mean, you could try to get these three in a row right here that, uh, I mean, they look like, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna drop my Google man on the street so we can look at all three together. Uh, brick properties, oh my goodness. I think they need a roof on a two out of three. <laughs> that one, I don't know if the tree's growing over it or through it, uh, but this one is definitely in trouble. Um, I would recommend picking that one if I were you. <laughs> it's uh, You can see the bars on the window, maybe some graffiti there. It's not the best neighborhood when I look down the street as far as vandalism goes. Um, but uh, somebody lives here, somebody rents here, and uh, sometimes this is the nature of tax investing. You take something that needs some work and you, if the deal makes sense, you might put work into it. I think this deal would not make sense, but I think this deal might. <laughs> so. That's just my two cents. Uh, again, if we want to see that property on the left that looked the best, uh, I'm going to click on its property report here. We can see it's vacant, valuation of 43,000. It's a 4-2 with 2,000 square feet. And uh, if I want to bid on that property, it's in the auction. I click the big green button. It's going to be at Zeus Auction. I have a link to register, a link to the info, and a link to the list so you can get all of that information to participate in the auction here. So, um, yeah, a lot going on in Shelby. It's not um, the most appealing county as far as property valuation, vandalism, and just the quality of properties. If they've been in the inventory a long time, they do look bad. But um, let's just give a um, throw the county borders on and you can see it's a big county. You could look out in the suburbs or into even the country up here. I see a large-ish uh, chunk of property there. This is 60 acres, it in, looks industrial. So, you know, it's, it's just what is your strategy and does the market uh, meet your needs? That's, that's kind of a you question, but what we do is we put all that information right here. You can filter it. You can go for improvements only. There's still 2,000 of them. Minimum value, let's give it a $50,000 just to give it a nice floor. There's still 700 properties in there to look at. And so um, let's see what one of the nicer properties looks like. Let's find this one on the map. This one is in the land bank. And it's one of the better looking land bank properties. 
The land bank has a different purchase option here. You click on that, follow those steps to buy. It's not an auction. You would buy from them with an application here. Uh, let's panorama this house just to see um, one of the best tax properties I've ever seen, probably because it has a roof and looks this good, and it's in the land bank. So uh, you would not compete at auction. You would just apply to the land bank to buy this. So opportunity in Shelby County. Uh, you need to put the other pieces together, of course, so you know that you can fix the property, rehab it. If you're gonna be renting it, you want a property manager. All of those fun things that we don't do at Parcel Fair, but um, definitely things that you will end up doing if you try to buy rental properties in Shelby County, Tennessee. All right, that was a long sidebar. Let's move on to North Carolina and talk about the in-person tax deed foreclosure auctions where we had 170 so far in November, 52 so far in December. Uh, we do have a deep dive video about North Carolina. It is not the most straightforward market. In fact, it's not even that popular with our user base because there's a massive advantage to being located within driving distance of the county courthouse, um, mainly because of the upset bid process. If you traveled into town and place a bid and win, there are two weeks where someone could upset you and outbid you even after the auction's over. So keep that in mind. If you're located in North Carolina, it might be an excellent market for you. Florida, the year-round auctions, we did have uh, some over-the-counter news. Highlands County, uh, we had a big update because they moved their uh, list and we had a lot of trouble getting the list for a while there, um, but now we have it uh, regularly being updated and up to date. So uh, the, check out Highlands OTC liens if you wanna see something new in Florida. Uh, tax deed auctions, those are also happening throughout the year. Uh, 50 in November, 48 already popped up for December. Foreclosure auctions also all year. Uh, 256 auctions in November, 202 already in December. Both of those calendars spilled way out to 2025 already, excuse me, so you can go check those out. And uh, lastly, over-the-counter liens and over-the-counter deeds available. We're not gonna go too far in Florida, but I will at least uh, give you a peek at the auction calendar. Florida, so many auctions. Let's filter by deed auctions first. 50 of those in November, 48 in December, moving straight into 2025, uh, 28 more in January, uh, February, March, you can look all the way out into April already. <laughs> and then foreclosure auctions only, uh, let's just, yeah, so many of these to look at, um, also well into 2025, so we won't go deeper than that, but um, you can plan all the way to April for foreclosures as well. Uh, Virginia, we're just going to throw the auctions on screen here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine auctions in the next few weeks. Uh, we will add more if they announce them, but this could be the closeout of the year for Virginia. Um, <clears throat> these are tax deed, uh, tax foreclosure auctions that basically, uh, I think all of these are in person if I remember correctly, so um, check those out. Big advantage if you live in the area. We do have photo and video scouting services if you don't live in the area and want someone to go check out a house for you. And we have a video that helps you get started there if you wanna go check that out on this channel as well. Alabama, the tax auction season has been complete since June, so nothing new on that front. Uh, the land bank did reopen for the Birmingham land bank to be specific. We announced that a few weeks ago and uh, it's a great opportunity if you're trying to buy properties and work with a land bank. And uh, we have a video just about that, just the Birmingham land bank that released two or three weeks ago. So check that out if you wanna know more about that. Um, we always have OTCs and resellers on the site. Those markets stay fresh year round. We add everything that we can find, everything that's published, and uh, resellers are actively posting every week. Uh, so the off season is most of the year for Alabama, so we made a video about it. The opportunities go throughout the year. You don't wanna miss out by just waiting for the auction season. Here's the calendar that shows you the layers of opportunity in Alabama. The, the, the tax auction season, of course, is the top two. And uh, moving down the list, you can see different ways to buy OTC, resellers, and land bank. And of course, we'll move our red dot into the middle of November because we're at the closing of the year. You can see OTCs and uh, resellers and land banks are still very active, just no auctions right now. Arkansas, their auction season completed this fall around September, and uh, we do track OTC deeds. I've tried to simplify this a little bit. Um, the first seven months of the year, we averaged about 70 new tax deeds per month were added. It was very much a trickle. And then in August, 361, and you can see 
the last three months were just uh, like 1,300 uh, tax deeds added, leftovers. Only 14 in November, we might be back to the um, kind of trickle of properties coming in, but there could be more added this month. So uh, we have a lot of other uh, videos on Arkansas if you want to buy over the counter. Um, it's a great program through the uh, Commissioner of State Lands there, one of our favorite states to shop in. And uh, so just check those out. Um, it's the only thing going on right now in Arkansas that we have on the site. Mississippi also over the counter season, but there are a lot available, 6,721. And in a picture you can see right there, uh, not many properties added until you get to September, October, just blew the doors off with uh, 743 added. November we're halfway through and we're already tracking ahead of October. And if it keeps it up, we might beat October's numbers for new properties. <clears throat> the best thing about Mississippi, as we showed you earlier in the video, uh, is that you can, uh, well, you can essentially apply to buy immediately. So um, these are the properties in the OTC inventory history report. That's This is the report right here in your tools menu. And uh, you can look over history and see when properties were added and how many, but all we care about right now is November, 379 added so far. And uh, if we wanna go dig into one of these, I'll do this very quickly. Let's click on the first parcel there. It's land, it's a nice 1.7 acres, but, uh, one thing that turns people off is that there's a lot of steps to register and apply for the property. So you have to create an account with the state. You have to go through. It's not nearly as easy as Arkansas or Alabama, but that could mean less competition for you as an over-the-counter buyer. Um, you do have to go find the property on their site using this section of the steps. And then you have to save the property, and then it's kind of like a checkout uh, shopping cart sort of thing. You finally get to the point of the process where you apply at the end. All that to say, uh, it's not the most straightforward thing the first time you do it, but if you learn it, you have an advantage and know how to buy from a nice hidden market. Louisiana, not much has changed, but we do have nine sheriff sales coming up and 13 adjudicated sales. Uh, we have a lot that are unscheduled pending auction. You can kick those off by placing a deposit, and I mean there are thousands of those on the site. So if you want to kick off those auctions, just find the pending auctions, place your deposit, and then read and understand the auction rules before you pay even a penny into that deposit because you need to know what you're buying. Louisiana is unique. And lastly, there are a few OTCs in the New Orleans Redevelopment Authority. That's on our site as well. Maryland had a little bit of OTC news. They actually took away some properties and then added them in a different uh, portal. So it looks like 600 were added, but we already knew about these properties. They were just missing for a few weeks or months. I can't remember. We do have photo and video scouting services in Maryland. It's a nice state for OTC liens and uh, probably worth checking out. Deep into the OTC season for Arizona, over-the-counter properties, 27,000 available. This is a mixture of liens and deeds. And wow, I'll just jump straight to the last slide. Uh, Missouri, Iowa, Nevada, Oklahoma, Utah, nothing to report right now because they are in their off seasons. We do periodically add OTCs when they are released. Um, if you know of some that we don't have that you want to see, by all means, let us know. Otherwise, we are uh, tracking these as we find them. And that's it for the week. Uh, this has been a nice full video. We're um, running a little over time here. But uh, in my last thoughts here, uh, please subscribe to the channel if this is content you want to see more of. We uh, could use the the indicator there that uh, people are watching this. Like the video if you uh, if you liked it. That lets us know that this is the kind of content you want to see more of. And uh, if you haven't tried Parcel Fair, we have a seven day free trial. We'd love to uh, chat with you if you want to reach out and ask questions. You can do that in our private Facebook group if you're a subscriber. You can do it on the YouTube channel here and publicly ask us questions. You can also use the contact form on our site. Just please reach out. We love to engage, get to know what you're doing and how we can help you out saving you just tons of time in your research. That's our goal. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and have a nice day.